Hey guys, it's Liz. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you my journey as a double major in computer science and mathematics. I have a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and a Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics and today I wanted to walk you through the courses I took from freshman year all the way to senior year in order to accomplish this double major. I know some of you watching this are thinking about studying computer science and or math or maybe you're just looking to figure out what kind of courses you should take in college and how you should plan out a schedule in college. And I hope this video helps you guys out. So if you don't know me personally, my name is Liz Victoria as I'm here on YouTube. I was a double major in computer science and mathematics from 2016 to 2020. I just graduated this past spring, the Zoom class of 2020 if you will. And my degrees are a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and a Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics. And I was able to complete these degrees in four years. And some of my professional experience, I have worked as an IT assistant and a software engineering intern. And then I am currently a full-time PhD student and I'm doing my PhD in Computer Science. Throughout the video, I will put up some slides, so if you need to, pause and take a screenshot if some of the courses I took are helpful or different slides that I made, so keep that in mind. Before and after each section, there will be some slides if you need to screenshot them for a few seconds. Otherwise, I'll be going in depth in detail on the slides as I talk throughout. First, I wanted to bring up some action items you can do before picking the school or declaring a major. So number one would be, do you have college credit already? Maybe you did AP courses or the IB program, or maybe you took classes at a community college, or maybe your high school had dual enrollment courses with a community college, and all of these could potentially help your future degree. So I would suggest searching your school, go on the website, look up if different transfer credits are acceptable, maybe your score of a 3 isn't acceptable, but maybe a score of a 5 on an AP exam is acceptable. So that differs by college, but it can help you plan your four years at the university. The next item is, does your school have a core curriculum? In other words, required courses outside of a specific major. So I went to a liberal arts school, which had a liberal arts curriculum, and some of the courses I had to take included up to three semesters of a foreign language, I also had to take a philosophy course, and a few things that didn't necessarily relate to computer science or math directly. So that's something to keep in mind when planning your future in a university. The next step that I suggest is looking up an undergraduate course catalog for the university you're interested in. Not only does this give you the courses that your school offers, but you can actually look up different majors that your school offers and then sometimes they'll have a plan, like a suggested four-year plan for incoming students interested in that major, in which case that can help you significantly plan out your future. And that is one of the tools that I utilized for my education in order to finish my double major. And then lastly, once you've done all the other steps, you can roughly plan out your first semester of college. I'm not sure what the timeline is for registering for classes, but I'm sure your school will communicate with you and have suggestions on what courses you can take. So for reference, this is the color key for my schedule. I wanted to put the required courses for math or computer science majors in blue and then use yellow for courses that were required for my university's core curriculum. And then I also put required courses for the honors program in green. And then lastly in white are just courses that I took that were not in my major and not in core curriculum. Before I go into depth on my courses, I just wanted to put this caveat in. So I mentioned that I had courses in green for the honors program. I did not end up finishing the honors program and this is a little explanation why. I originally wanted to do the honors program at my university, but later decided against it. And you'll see that in my courses. So the honors courses offered at my university did not overlap with my major requirements. So for me, I felt that the benefits of completing a double major in computer science and math outweighed the benefits of only 
finishing one major but potentially finishing the honors program. However, if your school has an honors program that you are interested in, it's possible that they do have courses that do overlap with the majors you want to do, in which case, full speed ahead. So before I entered the first semester at my university, I had some transfer credits. So I actually came in with 28 total credits, and this is how I am going to break them down for you. I had nine credits from AP testing, six of which only counted for elective credit, and three counted for Psych 101, Introductory Psychology, which did not help me with my major or with core curriculum, unfortunately. <laughs> the other 19 credits I had came from dual enrollment, which is a program that my high school did where it partnered with a community college so that I was able to take high school courses and while I'm completing them at the same time, they counted for college credit because they were being taught by a professor who was a certified professor for that community college. So that helped me out a lot. I was able to take two courses which were math um, 150 and math 151 calculus 1 and 2 and then also I got credit for a Spanish course for semester Spanish and then second semester Spanish which would help me with my core curriculum and then I was also able to get credit for composition and lit um, which was really a plus two so I wanted to say that out of the 28 credits that transferred, only about 16 were useful. So these were the courses that are highlighted in blue because they're for my math and CS majors, and then in yellow for the core curriculum requirements required by my university. So I was able to begin with already two math CS requirements before entering college. So let's jump into my freshman year at college. So for the first semester, I decided to take 16 units and I took Computer Programming 1, Logic for Math and Computer Science, Intro to Cultural Anthropology, Philosophy of Human Nature, third semester Spanish, and then as an elective course, I took Concert Choir, which was one unit and that was my fun little freebie course because I had done concert choir and show choir in high school and I wanted to see what that was like in college. For my second semester freshman year, I took Comp 151, which is Computer Programming 2, History, which was a course called The Ancient World, I took Intro to American Politics, Intro to Biblical Studies, Ethics of War and Peace, and then again I decided to take Concert Choir. I wanted to say that the total courses taken just in my freshman year that impacted my math or CS major was three. Moving on to sophomore year. The first semester of sophomore year, I enrolled in 13 units. I took Object-Oriented Design, I took Applied Math for Science and Engineering 1, General Chemistry, General Chemistry Lab, and Comparative or Interreligious Theologies. So the last course was an honors course, and then I wanted to say that General Chem and General Chemistry Lab are not necessarily required for a CS major, but because my degree was a Bachelor of Science, I needed to take a hard science course and also a lab with it. So I chose General Chemistry because I really enjoyed chemistry in high school, and I decided why not just use that. That This kind of requirement definitely differs by your university, so you'll definitely look up the course catalog and see what they require for your specific school. Now moving on to second semester of sophomore year, I took data structures and algorithms, mobile application development, which was fun because I got to code in Swift and make some iOS apps. And then I took linear algebra, advanced composition, and Christian social ethics. And again, this is the breakdown. I have shown seven courses for the sophomore year, which would help my CS and math major, and then the other courses for core curriculum in yellow, and then in green, honors courses. Moving on to junior year. So by this time, I had officially declared my um, double major in computer science and mathematics. So the first semester of junior year, I enrolled in 17 credits. I first took computer graphics, which is an elective course for computer science. I took calculus three, probability, 
ecology slash environmental biology, and then sound and spirit in monsoon Asia. Then for second semester, junior year, I enrolled in 18 credits. I took Comp 280, which is Introduction to Computer Systems. I took Algorithms. I took ind an independent study course. I took History of Math. Introduction to Mechanics, Introduction to Mechanics Lab, and then I took From Realism to Rap. So for junior year, the total courses in Math or CS that I took was nine. I had to take Introduction to Mechanics and Introduction to Mechanics Lab, as that was a requirement for my math major. Originally, I was just CS with a math minor, and I didn't have to take that, but later when I declared declared my double major, I found out I had to take Introduction to Mechanics and the lab with it. If I had known that before, I would not have had to take my chemistry course or my chemistry lab. So some of these things you learn as you go and it's okay if you don't have everything figured out. You're going to see later that lots of things are doable no matter what. So finally, senior year, this past year, I got to live through and it was great and exciting and crazy. So yeah, first semester senior year, I took 15.5 credits. I took principles of digital hardware, automata, computability, and language. And I said computability a little bit strange there, but moving on. Um, I also enrolled in senior project one, real analysis, and again, an independent study course. Now for second semester senior year, which half of was online thanks to Zoom and the situation that the world is in, I took Operating Systems, Independent Study, Senior Project 2, Mathematical Statistics, and Topology. And something that you'll see in my junior and senior year courses is that I was enrolled in independent study courses and sometimes these applied to my math major and sometimes these applied to my computer science major. That is because I was fortunate enough to work closely with a professor and work on different research projects and be able to get credit for them. So if you're thinking that there isn't something that might be the most appealing that your course catalog, like that your school offers and is hard coded into their catalog, you can always make relationships with your professors and see what kind of research they're doing and they might let you work on that and that can be your elective credit and that can end up helping you graduate. So don't ever think you're limited to what is required in the course catalog or um, those hard rigid lines. You can always do independent study, you can always ask different people and see what you can do um, that's maybe outside of the box thinking so that your educational experience is unique to you and that it does the most for you. So the total computer science slash math course that I took Senior year were 10. All of my courses my senior year ended up counting for my majors, which was crazy but also really rewarding because that's what I wanted to focus on for my senior year and that ended up being strategic for applying to grad school and also applying to jobs because those skills are what I would be using and you want those to be the most fresh in your head for when you're doing interviews or when you're actually working. One little slide here is for miscellaneous courses. So I actually got 3.5 credits from different courses not in the traditional four year schedule. So for winter, ses winter session, so winter intercession of my sophomore year of college, I was able to study abroad in Florence and I took Introduction to Modern Architecture. And then the summer before my junior year, I took 0.5 credits, which basically just meant that I was an undergraduate researcher and I was able to use this credit to help me finish my math major. So in this case, the total math CS courses taken is one. So here's the breakdown of total courses and credits taken. I graduated with 156 credits total. 128 were from the university that I went to, and then 28 were from transfer credits. I've broken this down further to show you what your experience might look like. So from my institution, I ended up taking 29 courses in math or CS, which equated to 83 credits. I also took 10 core curriculum courses, which equated to 30 credits. 
and then I took four honors courses which is 13 credits and then not in my major or not in core curriculum I ended up taking two courses which counted for two credits and those courses were actually the concert choir courses and then from my transfer credits I just broke this down two courses that I took were for my CS or math majors and then um, two counted for my core curriculum so some of the Spanish courses I took ended up helping me finish my core curriculum and then I ended up getting 12 credits or I took four courses from transfer credits that didn't really help me with my majors and didn't help me with core curriculum. From that, I wanted to give you the overall college recap. So what's most important to you if you think you are interested in majoring in computer science or math is that I took about 31 courses total. So 91 total credits from math and CS. And then depending on your university, you may or may not need to take core classes. For example, some colleges may require you to have a certain level of math or a certain level of English. They may not require you to have like a philosophy course that I did or a um, religion course that I had to take. So that'll just depend on your, on your university. But I ended up having to take 12 courses of core, which equated to 38 credits. Now, this last part I will focus on. Courses that I ended up taking that were not useful for my major or for the core curriculum. I took 10 courses. So that's 27 credits that didn't necessarily help me finish my computer science math degree and did not help me finish my core curriculum for my university. Four of these were honors courses and six were not courses not in my majors and not in my core. So again, just to repeat, credits not useful for my majors or core. In other words, these credits did not help me graduate with math or CS degrees. Four AP courses did not help me with graduating in the sense of they did not really count for requirements, they just counted as elective credits. And then I took six courses unnecessarily at my university, four of which were honors courses, and two of which were not in my major or core. So the bottom line is that if I can do a double major and have 27 unnecessary credits with six unnecessary courses taken at my university, anything is possible. I repeat, anything is possible. One, you can study whatever you want to if you plan it out. Two, don't be afraid to take courses that seem interesting to you even if they don't apply to your major. Three, you will be able to graduate on time. People like professors, mentors, advisors, friends, classmates, they will be able to help you plan your schedule and plan your degree. And number four, have fun. So if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Also leave comments down below. I will respond to any questions that you might have. I love to get connected with you. I also have an Instagram now. My Instagram handle is right here. It's Liz underscore Victoria underscore YT. And I'd love to connect with you there as well. And thank you so much for watching. I will be producing more computer science and math related content very soon.